Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. So in the last episode, we finally managed to, you know, put a band-aid on the breach and kind of get things to a somewhat normal. However, apparently breaches are just popping up all over the world right now. So we're trying to build up some power, trying to turn around and, you know, get the Inquisition's name known since we have actually founded it now. However, we have to talk to some people first. So we're going to go ahead and go around and talk to everyone. I think we still have Solus, Varric, um, and I think that actually might be it. Because we've talked to Cassandra, we've talked to Cullen, we've talked to Josephine. So yeah, I think it's just Varric and Solus that's really left. And uh, we might have some little knick-knack quests to turn around and pick up. But again, I'll probably end up doing that in my spare time and not actually on camera since the uh, a lot of these quests are kind of fetch quests. It was probably my only complaint about this game when I had when I first played it, um, along with the fact that, again, the maps seem more like wide open MMO spaces as opposed to, you know, an actual kind of like... Uh, I guess you know like your witchers and stuff but again they're different types of rpgs so they're not the same so now that cassandra's out of earshot are you holding up all right i mean you go from being the most wanted criminal in thetis to joining the armies of the faithful most people would have spread that out over more than one day oh uh, you know it's fine i mean hey look at it or origins i mean Family died and became a great warden. Had a new family. They died. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Uh, too many people died up there. I'm just glad to be alive. I'm just glad I'm still standing after all that. I still can't believe you survived Cassandra. <laughs> You're lucky you were out cold for most of her frothing rage. For days now, we've been staring at the breach, watching demons and maker knows what fall out of it. Bad for morale would be an understatement. I still can't believe anyone was in there and lived. I mean, it was just me, right? Why did you stay? If it was that bad, why did you stay? Cassandra said you were free to go. I like to think I'm as selfish and irresponsible as the next guy, but this? Thousands of people died on that mountain. I was almost one of them, and now there's a hole in the sky. Even I can't walk away and just leave that to sort itself out. Yeah, his chest hair pretty much saved him. Um, it hasn't sunk in yet. We need to close the breach. I was fortunate. It hasn't sunk in yet. I'm still not sure I believe that any of this is really happening. If this is all just the Maker winding us up, I hope there's a damn good punchline coming. You might want to consider running at the first opportunity. I've written enough tragedies to recognize where this is going. Heroes are everywhere. I've seen that. But the hole in the sky... That's beyond heroes. We're going to need a miracle. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you look at the whole situation in Origins. Yeah. Again, par for the course. Need something? Uh, I have questions about Hawk. I've read your tale of the champion. And I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. Mm, what happened to Anders? What happened to the mage who destroyed the Kirkwall Chantry? The book never says. He fled Kirkwall with the mages from the Circle. Stayed with them a while. But he had to move on. Somehow a lot of mages blamed him for making them live as fugitives. I don't know where he is now. And I don't want to know. <laughs> Ah, uh, Anders. Uh, Orsino's fate make, made no sense. In the book you say that first enchanter Orsino turned himself into a giant monster made of corpses? How? Why? Do I look like an expert on magical weirdness to you? Well, I can't tell you how. For the why, all I can say is he was desperate. Hmm. Uh, you made up the Arashok fight. There is no way Hawk really could have killed the Arishok. It would have started a war with the Kranari. I was told later that the Kranari disavowed his actions. Apparently the Arishok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall and the Kuhn didn't want another assaulted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the Red Dreadnought away, they just said, We will never speak of this again. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. 
Now, I will admit that uh, I don't remember a whole lot about the choices that I made in Dragon Age 2. Um, I do remember that I think, or at least I kind of remember, that I believe I made these choices because there's a character named Sten in Dragon Age Origins. Um, one of my favorite characters, and again, you know, loved him throughout the entire series. But to my understanding, if you kill the Air Shock, Sten ends up becoming the Air Shock, and that has some impacts on things later on. So I believe that's what this save is. Again, this stuff is very vague to me because it's been almost 10 years. So uh, where are Hawk's friends? Where are the rest of Hawk's associates now? Meryl decided to look after the elves left homeless by the fighting. She's done a pretty good job of keeping them away from the mages and Templars so far. I guess she has plenty of practice avoiding stupid human battles with her old Davis clan. Fenris has kept himself busy, hunting down the Tevinter slavers who came south to prey on the refugees. I'm not sure exactly where he is at the moment. You can usually follow the trail of corpses, though. Isabella went back to the Raiders. She's calling herself an admiral now. I don't know if she's actually in charge or just has a really dirty hat. Might be the same thing, honestly. Sebastian went back to Starkhaven. I'm sure he's boring all sorts of people there. <laughs> Hawk's little brother was off on some warden business near the Anderfeld border last I knew. Aveline is still guard captain. I'm pretty sure Kirkwall would fall into the sea if she quit her job. Man. All right, so that's pretty much everybody. Need something? And what personal questions do we have? Can I ask you something, Beric? to talk about me i'm flattered also inclined toward extravagant lies this is true uh where are you from are you from ferelden or lay three marches born and raised in kirkwall and despite whatever you've heard no kirkwall's not that bad <laughs> oh okay yeah just a former slave city still with the statues on the outside that's crazy then again you know i live in the united states so you know we still have confederate stuff around me what do you do? I'm not clear on your line of work. You're a merchant? I'm a businessman. My family has a seat in the Dwarven Merchants Guild. Merchants buy and sell goods. Businessmen buy and sell stores. In my spare time, I manage a spy network, and occasionally, I write books. <laughs> you get around. Could you do Liliana's job? If you run a spy network, why is Liliana our spy master? Just a better spy master. The truly great ones can keep their distance. They don't get attached to their people. Me, I always wind up babysitting my informants and worrying about their families. We're in better hands with her. You know, now that I think about it, as much as I know about Dragon Age lore, I don't know how Liliana really came to be in the position that she's in now. Like, I, I mean, I. I know that she had, you know, connections with Divine Justinia and stuff like that, but like how she became as powerful as she became in, I wouldn't say such a short period of time, but it wasn't that long. Eh, I don't really know. But I, again, I guess to Varric's point, she's just good at it. Mm, what shops do you own? What sort of shops do you own? Actually, we don't own shops. That was just an example. Mostly we invest in money lending. Auction houses, a few mercenary companies, a couple of smithies. I think we own half a beet plantation in Ravane somewhere. <laughs> Most of that's my brother's doing. Bartrand had business sense. Not much tax, but loads of business sense. Uh, what books do you write? Hard in Hightown. What kind of books have you written? Hard in Hightown? Something like that? my hands at a few genres. My crime serials are my most popular. Hard in Hightown. Yeah. Breaking the rules to get things done. The Tale of the Champions is the most famous thing I've written, or infamous, maybe. I started a romance serial once, Swords and Shields, but to be honest, I don't have a knack for romance. Most of my stories end in tragedy. Probably that says something unfortunate about me personally. <laughs> uh, let's see. How do you know Cassandra? How do you and Cassandra know each other? Kirkwall Chantry being destroyed? The guy responsible used to be a friend of mine. The 
Seeker had questions about that, and I had answers. Tell me about the crossbow. Where did you get that crossbow? I've never seen one like it. Bianca? She's one of the kind. There's a hidden shop in Kirkwall called the Black Emporium. I found her in a barrel labeled Swag. The owner sold her to me for a ham sandwich and a pair of yellow ruffled pants. <laughs> what? Why Bianca? Who is she named for? I can't tell you. Why not? And the reason for that is complicated. It's the one story I'll never tell. We just have to leave it at that. Also, didn't know that he got the bow from the Black Emporium. Uh, so the Black Emporium is, I believe it was DLC technically for uh, Dragon Age 2 because there were, if I remember correctly, it was because like there was a lot of people that wanted to make certain edits to their character after the game came out. And, you know, of course, the only way you can do that, you, the only way you could do it beforehand was that you basically just had to start the game over. That's the only way. So they put the Black Emporium in there. I can't remember whether it kind of came like immediately after the game came out or if it was just like an initial DLC. But I do remember that being like a big thing in Dragon Age in general, which is why I really like the character creator for um, Thanks, Dragon Age, the Veil Guard. Uh, there are videos up on YouTube about it. I would beware because there are spoilers everywhere. But um, yeah, the, in the in the new character creator, they have like different lighting and stuff like that that you can use. And that was always like a huge problem in uh dragon age origins was you know you would turn around and make your character and then you know you'll see them in normal light and they look hideous so <laughs> they put the uh lighting settings and stuff like that i also saw that apparently i think one of the producers for dragon age veilgar used to work on the sims so a lot of the inspirations for the character creator and a lot of the things that's in the character creator actually came from ideas they had in the sims so but uh i can't wait to jump into it Blessed hero sent to save us all. <laughs> Sounds a dashing. Am I riding in on a shining steed? I would have suggested a griffon. But sadly, they're extinct. Joke as you will, posturing is necessary. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars, both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. Um, hopefully the one that survives. Also, you know, just a little note. I think Solas is probably the only other ball character <laughs> that I can think of that I actually like besides um, Max Payne, briefly. You study ancient ruins. What do you mean ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time as a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. How can you sleep there? You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I hate the giant spiders. I can't stress that enough. Like, I love fantasy stuff so much, but please, can we stop it with the giant spiders? And again, I love the drow in Baldur's Gate. They worship a spider god. Ugh. Hmm, that's impressive. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay then. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate mage surrounded by Chantry forces, and unlike you, I do not have a divine mark protecting me. Cassandra has been accommodating. But you understand my caution. Hmm. Cassandra will protect you. Cassandra trusts you. She won't let anyone put you into a circle against your will. Thank you. I appreciate the thought. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. 
Yeah, I suspect they would have trouble putting you in one anyway. Anyway. Closing the breach is our primary goal. But I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proved that much. You think it survived? You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. Um, sir, I'm, I'm not an artifact. I'm a whole person. Uh, I agree. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? I came for your favorite thing to ask you questions. Tell me about the Fade. What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, am I wondering? There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. Mm, tell me about the Breach. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster in an area that has seen many deaths. Your mark allows you to exert some control over the breach. That means it was created deliberately. I remember when I was younger, I really liked the whole concept of the fade because it, it kind of explained, you know, a lot of weird things. And it kind of made me think about like real life where like you see like haunted places in real life and how there's a tendency, a tendency where when supposedly when there's a place that's haunted it's always because there's a lot of death that incurred in that area or something like that and i like the idea of the fade where it's just like these areas are like a almost like a it's like a rift in between this world and the next so i just remember thinking that was real cool when i was younger uh tell me about the veil i'd like to know more about the veil circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the fade but according to my studies in ancient elven lore that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. Hmm. That sounds marvelous. I'm going to say this because I'm a mage, but also because I'm trying to be nice to Solus. It sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality. Where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful, and the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreams. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious terrors. <laughs> Tell me about demons. I'd like to know more about demons. The Chantry says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. Demon, is that wish gone wrong? Yeah, you see a lot of that in uh, Dragon Age Awakenings. Um, <laughs> I love the Dragon Age series, but there's so much from Dragon Age Awakenings that just really didn't get followed up on. And yeah, <laughs> but um, you do learn a lot about spirits and stuff like that. Um, I think there was a Justice, who's a whole ass character. And it was very interesting interacting with Justice and learning things about the Fade and spirits and stuff. So, yeah, you learn a lot of cool things from there. Can we change that? Is there a way to coexist? To live with them, if not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The Veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one. And it matters that you thought to ask. Hmm. We'll talk later. Yep, don't go anywhere. Tell me about yourself. I'd like to know more about you, Solus. Why? <laughs> um I respect you. You're an apostate, yet you risked your freedom to help the Inquisition. It's not the wisest course of action when framed that way. <laughs> I appreciate the work you're doing, Solus. I just wanted to know more about you. I'm sorry. There's so much fear in the air. What would you know of me? Yeah, how old are you? What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest the young man. 
especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, the spirit of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. It treasured my dreams. Being awake out of the Fade became troublesome. Hmm. That sounds dangerous. Did the spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting me to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so much I wanted to explore. Mm, well, clearly you woke up. I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imagination. To find interesting areas, one must be interested. Mm -hmm. That kind of reminds me of, um, I think it's called the Umbra in the um, Werewolf series with uh, the World of Darkness stuff. But they also have kind of like a reverse world in there or kind of an upside down, if you will. Is that why you're here? the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the fade. Hmm. I hope that works. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I have enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the fade. How so? You train your will to control magic and withstand possession. Your indomitable focus is an enjoyable side benefit. You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. Hmm. Where have you studied? You said you'd traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers. The best of the battlefields. Spirits pressed so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Mm, which battlefields? Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. Tell me what happened. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment. I see heroic wardens lighting the fire and a power mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real. It is the fade. They are all real. Mm. It's all about perspective. Uh, do you work with anyone? Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom. Possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they have seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. Wisdom and purpose. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. Hmm. Those are demon names. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The fade reflects the mind of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. That sounds very interesting coming from you, Solus. <clears throat> That's amazing. I'm impressed that you could become friends with spirits. You ever try? My friends comforted me in grief and shared my joy. Yet, because they exist without form, as we understand it, the Chantry declares that spirits are not truly people. Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her face? <laughs> Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? I mean, hmm. Sure, spirits are people. I hadn't thought about it that way, but I see your point. 
few are willing to entertain such a notion. We'll talk later. Goodbye. All right, I don't think there's anything else I have left to talk with him about. Nope. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Sir, are you cold? I always wonder about like <laughs> mages in these settings where it's just like you walking around with your feet out and stuff. Like, are you using like some type of passive magic to keep yourself warm? All right, and I think that is pretty much it. Yeah, we spoke to Josephine. Haven's best and brightest. Speak with the Smith. Fill the requisition. Okay, so we do have a few things to do. Quest one of two. Go to the war table to scout the Storm Coast. We don't have enough power for that, though. So, all right. So let me speak to the apothecary. Find recipe through exploration, blah, blah, blah. All right, so you can upgrade potions. I don't think I ever used any of this stuff because I really didn't use potions because, of course, I was playing on easy. But, um, yeah, I may have to do some of this stuff, um, of course. So I guess now discovering all that elf root and stuff will actually have a purpose. But, um... Yeah, this will be something that I deal with again, probably off camera. Glyphus said to check for you to make sure these are safe to serve. They're fine. Nobody will take sick as long as she boils them right. Smart woman for asking, though. All right, go ahead, give me a quest. Look who's back from the dead. Again, I shouldn't be surprised. You oxmen are tough as old leather. Uh, we've met. I don't recall meeting you before. I'd be surprised if you did. You weren't particularly coherent. Someone had to patch you up after you staggered out of making those wear, though. So, you're welcome. Thank you. I didn't realize. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you can pay me back by fixing the world. Name's Adan. I'm in charge of keeping our little band here stocked with potions and elixirs. Not that Seeker Pentagast seems to care whether we've got the supplies to actually do that. Hmm. Okay, how do I order potions? How do I go about having potions made? Take a look there and tell me what you'd like. Find a recipe for something better. I can make that too. All right. You're back. And in one piece. Need any help? Is there anything I can do to help out? We're fine as far as raw labor goes. You've more important things to do than tend to me. I only wish I'd been able to find Master Tajin's notes. Old bastard was working on something special. He died at the Conclave, and his notes weren't here. Been too busy dealing with the wounded to look for them. Okay. Farewell. So I need to find his notes. Not sure where they would be, but all right. Patient observations, day two. Pulse normal, breathing normal, still unresponsive. Careful drop feed of prep, elf root extract to hasten his recovery. A lot of thrashing, mutters about too many eyes. Something about the gray, encouraging? Okay. Don't know what that is. Also, what did we have in the codex? Did we discover anything? Oh, there's a dar. Let me read this. The Canari and Parvalin live under the Kune, a religious and ph philosophical doctrine dictating every aspect of their society. Takoa Adar's parents left that restrictive life before he was born, settling in the free marches and raising their child outside the Kune. Kunari brought up outside their society are still feared, shunned, or misunderstood by most people in the South. The average citizen of Orle or Ferelden assumes they are cold-blooded thralls or vicious bandits. When Takoa manifested a gift for magic, his parents arranged for a mage among the Tal Vashoth to teach him how to control his talents. He joined the Valokas mercenary company as a young adult, making a name for himself over the years as a capable and powerful mage. Takoa was hired to provide protection at the Conclave as a neutral party to stand between the Templars and human mages. After the disastrous explosion at the Temple of Sacred Ashes that killed the Divine, Adar was the only survivor. Rumors that the mysterious mark on his hand is a sign of the Maker's favor were spread by those who claimed they saw the Divine Prophet and Draste herself lead Adar out of the Fade. Okay. 
And then we have Cassandra. I'm fully aware of the intent behind your predecessor's declaration. Lord Seeker Lambert pried the Templars away from Chantry control and led them into an assault upon all mages for reasons you both find justified. I, however, am uncertain when the seekers of truth went from guarding against injustice to perpetuating it. If you truly believe that it is not the case, I suggest you look out a window at the chaos this war has caused and ask yourself if Thetis will recover even if you are victorious. I remain at Divine Justinia's right hand and will stay there even if you brand me traitor. I'm sorry, but there is too much at stake to swerve from the path we willingly followed at the Chantry's foundation. From a letter by Seeker Cassandra Pentagast to Lord Seeker Lucius Corrin, Dragon 939. Okay, we have Divine Justinia. Formerly the revered mother Dorothea of Orlais, Divine Justinia V rose to power after the death of Divine Beatrix III in the year 934 of the Dragon Age. Little was known of Dorothea's background before she joined the Chantry as an initiate, but she proved to be a liberal and daring thinker, willing to take a former bard and lay sister Liliana as a close advisor. A headstrong devotion to her own agenda and rumored support of the Maid Rebellion earned her no small dislike from the powerful priests long used to controlling access to the Divine. In the year 940 of the Dragon Age, Divine Justinia called a summit, intending to negotiate a truce between the Mage Rebellion and the Templar splintered from the Chantry. And the, div uh, bleh, the Divine Conclave was held at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, the most holy place in Thetis. Before a resolution could be reached, a cataclysmic explosion destroyed the Conclave, consumed the Temple, rent the sky, and shattered the world's hope for peace. Divine Justinia V perished in the Temple of Sacred Ashes. The Chantry flounders, leaderless, leaderless in the wake of her death, and its fate grows increasingly uncertain. If order is not restored to Thetis, Justinia V might be remembered as the Chantry's final divine. Yikes. Ugh, High Chancellor Roderick. There are some who claim men have no place in the Chantry, beyond the lowest rank of scholarly brothers and those who take their place amongst the Templars. It is not true. This is an organization spanning seven nations, from the smallest village chantry to the Grand Cathedral in Valreul. It takes more than sermons to keep it alive. There is an invisible army at work ensuring meals are delivered, repairs are made, and faithful attended to, and much of it is done by chantry brothers like myself. The position of High Chancellor places a man beside the Most Holy. I control who is permitted audience, handle her correspondence deliver her word to Thetis and serve as her advisor on matters which may be mundane but cannot be disregarded. If I have influence, let it be said it is something I use sparingly if at all. This is a task to which I devote myself with solemn with solemnity. Ugh, I can never say that word. I and my fellows bear a burden so that others are free to guide the spirits of Thetis unencumbered. Also, something I thought was very interesting about how things work in the Dragon Age universe. You know, again, women pretty much control everything. You know, you don't typically see that. Uh, let's see, Solus. Cassandra, I understand our first order of business must be to investigate this bizarre breach in the sky and protect people from the demons descending. While my search continues, I wish to draw your attention to a new arrival at our camp, an elven apostate calling himself Solus. Solus entered the camp voluntarily surrendering his staff to Chantry forces, forces without protest. He is not Dalish and says that he has never been part of the Circle, claiming instead to have studied magic peacefully on his own, particularly magic tied to the Fade. While I suspect you will be reluctant to accept the help of an apostate, Solus did come to us freely. Witnesses saw him in a nearby village at the time of the blast, so he was likely not responsible for what happened at the Conclave. However, he has described the effects of the breach in enough detail to convince me that he knows more about the faith than anyone else present. Solus has requested permission to study the lone survivor in one of the smaller rifts, in hopes of finding a way to seal the breach. He has correctly guessed that it is growing, and believes it will destroy the entire world unless we find a way to stop it. Unless you object, I will allow him his studies, under proper observation, of course. Good old Liliana. And Varric. 
There's power in the stories. That's all history is. The best tales. The ones that last. Might as well be mine. Varric Tethris of the Dwarven Merchant Guild of Kirkwall is famous, or infamous, for two things. His books and his association with the champion of Kirkwall. After the Templars and the Circles broke away from the Chantry, Divine Justinian V sent her agents to Kirkwall, where the roots of the war began, in search of answers. The champion had long since disappeared, but Varric had written a book on his friend's involvement in the, in the destruction of the Kirkwall Chantry, and the left and right hands of the Divine located him with surprising ease. They captured and, and interrogated him, then brought him to the Conclave to give his testimony to the Divine in person, but fate decreed that he would never meet her. All right, Josephina. Josephine Montelier. Secret Cassandra. Josephine Montelier is a noble from the nation of Antiva. She was educated in Valreau, where she built connections among the court. Once she's finished her schooling at a surprisingly young age, Lady Montelier became the official diplomat between King Fog. Geno of Antiva to Empress Celine of Orlais. The appointment suits her. She's well-traveled, familiar with many forms of, of etiquette, and by all accounts, a skilled negotiator. If that endorsement does not suffice, Josephine is a personal friend. I have faith in her. We require someone both influential and trustworthy to be an ambassador for the Inquisition. You cannot tell me you would prefer to take the job yourself, Sister Liliana. All right. And I think that's pretty much it. And Droste's Mabari. Do we have any other tales? Notorious Raider Trash. How to Act Ferelden. The Children of Androste. Perils of Bard Life. Okay, we got a few things. But not a whole lot. Hmm. That's just talking about Cullen. But all right, let's get into it. The only other one I want to see is the one for the Grey Warden, but I don't know when or if that's going to pop up. Doesn't look like there's anything in here. What else do we have? Build a requisition. Speak with the Smith. Okay. Let's go ahead and speak with the Smith and then. I will turn around and jump into our first area in the hinterlands. But as I said, Dragon Age is a game all about talking. So, and that's just normal for Bioware games. So, you will spend a big chunk of time talking to people. Okay, that'll go away now. And the Smith. Is over there by the cart. Hello, sir. Ah, you're awake and out of Lady Cassandra's clutches. Here I paid that little knife here to inform me the moment you were free. No matter, no matter. Segret, honored to meet you. Thank you for all you've done, and hopefully we'll build it. Such as? What do you think I'll be doing exactly? Word's already spreading that if anyone could close that blighted thing in the sky, you. Anything you need is yours. For a reasonable price, of course. Supplies are a little tight, given the circumstances. Uh-huh. Why have you stayed? What kind of person stays to run a shop at a time like this? The kind with nowhere else to go. Those blasted demons destroyed most of my goods. If I stay here, work some contacts, I can start rebuilding. Maybe, just maybe, help you folks out in the process. Uh-huh. How's the mood here? You must speak with most everyone here. How are people doing? Hope and fear in equal measure. No one knows what it means when an inquisition is called. Yet, of course, we're all getting used to, well, you as our last best hope. Uh, nothing personal. All right, I don't have anything I want to buy. Stay safe. I probably don't even really have enough money to even consider buying things. Ah, blacksmith is on the other side. That's not the blacksmith. Where's the blacksmith? Come to me, child, and I if the Inquisition wants to feel the decent cap, 
Hello there. Expected you'd be by. I'm Hallett. And everyone knows who you are. How's the new gear fit? Mm, quite well. Dirty and warm. It's perfect. Good. World's gone mad. Stock armor and blades are good against bandits, but we're not fighting bandits. My gear will see you through demons, apostates, whatever this world throws at you. So, you need custom work, but something special. You bring the materials to us, we'll make it happen. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, we'll get into that stuff later. Uh, do you have any designs? If I want something, what can you make? Start simple. Something to keep you safe. Take a look at it on the table there and we can talk. You'll need materials. We should have what you want just outside. Can you improve equipment? Can you help improve my arms and armor? Yes. If you find a new piece, a pauldron or greaves, we'll take care of you. You can't just slap a new hilt on your sword in the field. Bring it here, we'll make sure it's done right and proper. Alright. Goodbye. Right. So yes, you can modify your weapons here. You can turn around and create your own weapons and such again i spent a lot of time especially later on in the game when you get access to more stuff i spent a lot of time um just making my own weapons and stuff like that and of course you can improve your armor or just make new armor and such um, i've made some ridiculously powerful armor i think what i made was i believe it was this armor no, it was um, the heavy armor, and I know that there's a particular material that you can get, and if you turn around and use it in the creation of said armor, then you can um, basically wear the armor. Because, of course, because we are mage, we can only wear light armor, but if you turn around and uh, get that particular material, you can use any stuff that you want. So, fun times. Uh... Why do you need my materials? Does the Inquisition not have supplies to make armor or weapons? Tough convincing traders to haul up here. Impossible to get them to risk the rare stuff, so that's on you. Uh, do you outfit the troops? Who outfits the Inquisition's soldiers? Not me. I've got work to do. Can't be passing a sword to every blighter who signs up. If you want to help the troops, talk to Thren, the quartermaster. She'll set up records. Okay. What's your story? How did you come to be here? I come from a little town called Lothry. It's all gone now. I was in Redcliffe when the Darkspawn hit it during the blight. Helped rebuild. Left when Wolsey decided it was time to hand the place over to the bloody mages. Ended up here. Just missed the boot. Can't decide if I'm the luckiest son of a bitch walking or the exact opposite. <laughs> Lucky. You're still walking. That's always good. Uh, all right, I think that's enough here. A study of the fifth blight part two. Oh, I can modify some armor. That's all that is. Uh, codex history. A study of the fifth blight volume two. The warden sought Arl Eamon, uncle of the late King Caelan, in the hopes of mustering troops from the Ferelden nobility. Upon arriving in Redcliffe, they learned that the Arl had fallen ill and was near death. His knights had gone in pursuit of the fabled ashes of Andraste, Eamon's only hope for a cure, and the village surrounding the keep was beset by a host of animated corpses. The wardens found and stopped the demon behind the undead before joining the search for Eamon's curse. No one is certain if the warden actually located the final resting place of Our Lady Andraste, but whatever they found saved the Earl of Redcliffe. Upon his recovery, Eamon Girin called for a landsmeet, and he and the wardens traveled to Denerim. The gathered lords and ladies of uh, Ferelden found Terran Loghain guilty of a number of crimes. He was sentenced to join the Grey Wardens to atone for his deeds. Furthermore, the lands meet bore witness to the betrothal of Queen Honora to Terran Bryce Kuzlin's youngest son, who was one of the two great wardens to survive Ostagar. 
The nobility then pledged their own armies in the battle against the Blight. The Archdemon clashed with the allied forces at the city of Denerim and was eventually slain, but at a terrible cost. Much of the city lay in ruin. The warden who rallied the armies was named the hero of Ferelden and accorded the highest honor. The fifth blight ended before most of the of Thetis knew it had begun, but it left a terrible wound on Ferelden. The losses suffered at Ostagar and Denerim greatly compromised the security of the kingdom. Southern Ferelden, for, Southern Ferelden from the Kakari Wilds to the edge of the Banorn are, to this day, a wasteland. It's uncertain how far the ripples from the event shall travel, or what waves it has already stirred. It's also funny, too, when I think about it, because it's just like... <laughs> in the original Dragon Age, at least, you know, because of the way, you know, the game was back in the day, you know, there wasn't much in Ferelden anyway, so... For them to be, to like, have even more of it wiped out, it's just kind of, well... I mean, I think the only real city was Denerim, and I guess Redcliffe, and our Red... Cliff is kind of screwed, so. You dislike the Templars. All right, so now I think we have done everything. We can go ahead and head to the hinterlands. That only took about an hour, so. I'm pretty sure about 10 minutes or so of that was actually just me fumbling around trying to get stuff prepared, but even still. God, that terrible outfit. I can't wait to change it. All right, Ferelden. So before that, um, Black Emporium. My scouts still comb the hills for clues about the explosion. I'll take what I can find. Okay. Uh, the Terran of Hyever, to whom it concerns, the Terranir of Hyever wishes to convey our deepest sympathies on the death of Divine Justinia the Fifth. The Most Holy was incomparable in her wisdom and dedicated in dedication to peace, and we had high hopes that her conclave would succeed. We will hold a vigil in high ever in remembrance of Justinia and cordially invite the Inquisition to attend. Um, I know Terran Cousin. I knew Justinia. I can't attend, but I could write to him. We should send a diplomatic attache and some of the Templars who knew the Divine. We have a number of Ferelden officers. We could send an honor guard to high ever. Uh, let's do the Josephine. At your service. This is more of a diplomatic thing. So, I did say I was going to mod that. I am going to mod that at some point. Um, I did see a mod, but um, trying to figure out how stuff works for Dragon Age Inquisitions is a little different than most usual mods I do. So, uh, gather coin. This is a recurring thing if you need some money. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm probably not going to do do this um, again. I may mess around with the mods and stuff like that and just give myself whatever coin I need for certain things. Because, again, I do want to focus on story. I don't want to have to focus on other things that we'll talk about later on in the game. So, yeah. Rescue soldiers missing in Ferelden. I need eight power for that. And power is also going to be something I'll probably end up modding as well. Because, again... I don't want to have to focus on that type of stuff. I'm going to focus just mainly on the story. Uh, address a nobleman's concerns. Harold, your inquisition says it's for order against chaos, reason in darkness. If you stand by this, come forth and drive the heretics from my lands. They claim to be refugees, but I've seen elves and apostates among them. Filthy savages tearing at our roots. Our monarch refuses to send forth armies, and my own knights were decimated at the conclave. I require your aid to return peace to my lands. Prove your loyalty and I will see you richly rewarded for your faith. Let's see, Liliana. We can take advantage of his ravings. Uh, my spies can harass the refugees into moving somewhere else to win Lord Cauldron's favor. We could send a few patrols, but I would prefer they help the refugees, not this Lord Cauldron. Ah yes, Lord Cauldron, a pariah even among his peers. Let us send a polite refusal and nothing more. Hmm. Let's see. I unfortunately think I'm aside with Liliana on this. Um, I don't like it, but we need power and stuff, so. Let's see what we have. 
And I think that's basically all I can do. Well, besides the Black Emporium, so. And I'm not gonna do this yet. Of course, this is just the Black Emporium that um, Varric mentioned. You can go there, buy some very rare items and such. So um, yeah, I'm not gonna be concerned with that at all. Huh, now that I think about it, there might be a mod that I already have. I could turn around and use for that. Um, I'll take a look at that off camera, but if I can, then I'll just use that. I'm, I'm very iffy about trying to run certain programs and stuff that I use for other games while I'm running this game because Dragon Age Inquisition is very exhaustive on my memory. Um, and I also use Firefox, which is also very um, exhaustive. So I don't want my game to crash in the middle of recording because it does not like other stuff running in the background. All right, so got that going and where is it? Where art thou? Ah, scout the inlets. All right, let's venture forth. We will be taking the love of our life, Cassandra, Varric, and Solus. Really need a warrior. We should get one soon. of Andraste. I've heard the stories. Everyone has. You know what you did at the breach. They might not know much about the Canari, but you'll get no backtalk from anyone here. That's a promise. Inquisition Scout Harding, at your service. I, well, all of us here, will do whatever we can to help. Uh, Harding, huh? Ever been to Kirkwall's high town? I can't say I have. Why? You'd be Harding and I... No, never mind. <laughs> so um harding is that's eh, not a spoiler harding is a um companion in dragon age veilgar she was quite beloved by uh the fans or whatnot honestly i never understood it but meh fans uh pleased to meet you it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance we should get to business the situation's pretty dire we came to secure horses from red cliff's old horse master I grew up here, and people always said that Dennett's herds were the strongest and the fastest this side of the Frostbacks. But with the Mage Templar fighting getting worse, we couldn't get to Dennett. Maker only knows if he's even still alive. Mother Giselle's at the crossroads helping refugees and the wounded. Our latest reports say that the war spread there too. Corporal Vale and our men are doing what they can to help protect the people, but they won't be able to hold out very long. You best get going. No time to lose. All right, so welcome to the Hinterlands. Now, as I said before, um, initially I will be doing a lot of this stuff on camera, but then after once we start getting into some of the side, the uh, side quest stuff, I'm not gonna have that on there. It's just a lot of it is just you know fetch quests and stuff like that. So I think I will continue into. The lightning stuff. Uh, I think I'm going to do Stormbringer. Exploding Bolt. Lightning Bolt does more damage if there are other enemies nearby. And if there are enough close to the striking point, a wave of force will knock back all enemies except for the paralyzed primary target. Okay. Lightning Cascade. Lightning Bolt now paralyzes other enemies near your main target. The more enemies it affects, the shorter the duration. Okay, so definitely not doing that. But exploding bolt sounds nice. Um, Stormbringer, I really want to do this. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do Stormbringer. All right, and for everybody else, uh, I'm just gonna let them auto level up. Um, I don't really have any particular preferences with um, the other. Wait a minute. Actually, yes, I do. Because Cassandra is a weapon and shield. There was one that I did kind of like. Yeah, so there's that. I do like that grappling chain ability. I've never played as a warrior on this game, but I've seen some of the other 
warrior characters use it and it's very helpful to keep people off of me um and let's see what the other ones are give them the boot after grappling chain drags an opponent to you you stun them with a hard kick chains for days grappling chain now pulls in all enemies near your target okay hmm this could be helpful so yeah let's go with that too yeah i, I do forget that like when it comes to um I typically use the auto level up, but I also do like certain characters to kind of fit certain roles. So sometimes I will actually have them spend more points into their own, um, their own specializations and stuff like that. So, but, um, yeah. Oh, wait, do you want to apply your pending ability purchase? Yes. Uh, who else? Varric. All right, Varric, so you really need to just focus on bow stuff, but also kind of need you to focus on traps. Uh... Ooh, Tread Lile. Your caltrips cover a wider area and cause enemies to bleed over several seconds. Enemies that tread upon your caltrips are briefly immobilized. Okay. Huh. So let's use that. And then looked like it hurt. The worst mistakes your enemies can make is to let you see them flinch. Whenever you score a critical hit, you regenerate stamina. Meh. Poison weapon. You coat your weapons in a deadly toxin, making every attack, making every attack poison enemies for a short time. That could be useful. Um. Yeah, that's not what I meant to do there. Let's see. Like archery, he already has long shot, and then there's archer's lance. Long shot now rips through every enemy along its path, doing bonus damage for each extra target it hits. That seems like it has to be a lot of precision with that, and I don't trust the AI to do that. Eagle Eye. Long shot now deals even more damage at greater ranges. Okay. First Blood, you've learned to pick apart enemies that are still unwounded and unwary. You do more damage to enemies that are only lightly injured. Okay. Death from above, you do more damage when firing from elevation. Okay. I do want that explosive shot. However, I think I'm just gonna focus on this stuff so far. So yeah, poison weapons. Okay. And Solus. I'm gonna have Solus focus purely on healing and barriers and stuff like that. So, mm, elegant defense. You've learned to cast barrier with a more stable magical pattern. Each time a barrier had a barrier you have cast expires, the ability's cooldown time is reduced. Okay, it's not too bad. Energetic defense. Your barrier holds its full strength for longer before it begins to decay. Okay. Also not bad. Peaceful aura. Your aura of tranquility makes enemies less likely to attack you in battle, even when you damage them. Yeah, you definitely need that. <laughs> um, dispel. You remove hostile magic and status effects from allies while stripping beneficial effects from enemies. Okay. Guardian Spirit. A protective barrier springs into place around you automatically when you are badly injured. Yep, you definitely need that as well. Okay. So there's Dispel... And there's Revival. That's the one I'm really going to need. But yeah, I usually, every time I've played with Solus, um, I usually kind of blitz all the healing and barrier stuff first. And then I'll come back to um, some of the other powers. Because, again, I've usually either been a mage or something like that. So I focus on being offensive and then usually use Solus to be defensive. 
but I don't think we're going to be running into anything too crazy right off the bat. Oh, now that I think about it, <laughs> maybe I should have got some inventory for people. Then again, um, okay, that's just all weapons. Can you, so you can wear the armors and stuff. Maybe I'll have you wear this. It does give you some more defense and stuff. You look crazy wearing this, but at the same time, it's just like, well, it's armor. I'll give you a Templar helmet. Don't have anything there. I'm actually surprised I don't have more weapons. Oh, but I think it's okay. I guess the, um, you only get weapons from the DLC that's relevant to you. So you don't have a bunch of OPS weapons right off the bat. I guess that's fair. Um, <laughs> sure. I do remember, um, <laughs> I don't like giving these armors out right off the bat because you know there's so much story stuff in the game that I just hate them looking crazy in the um in the cutscenes and stuff. I kind of wish there was like an option to cut off armors uh for the cutscene so they just wore their default stuff. Uh Solus. <laughs> yeah, Solus. I think I'm just gonna give you this. Sure. That's an interesting look. And then Cassandra. Yeah, I guess I'll give you this. Again, I would prefer not to, but armor and such. All right. Commander, I got an achievement there. Josephine is ready to report in. I leveled my, okay, yeah, I leveled up everybody. And who is this I need to speak to? Requisition officer. Word for you. Report. What is it? You may want to look into this. Acquired recipe inquisition tapestries. Okay. So yeah, just some side quest stuff. But first, let's go and clear some threats, I guess. I don't really remember everything that I needed to do and what order I did stuff in, but uh, yeah, we'll just kind of go around and just see what we can get into. There's a, looks like a quest over here. Looks like we got some enemies up there too. Read. A letter in an empty home. Uh, Brythus, I know you escaped with the other mages, and I know you will come here. My father told you that if you ever strayed, he'd put you down himself. If you're here, you know he's dead, but I'm not. I'll be killing apostates and waiting for you at Old Phoenix Place to the north. I've got father's sword and my true brothers in the Templars. Come if you're man enough, then... Or Evan, I'm not sure. So, a bow and some gold. Anything else? That seems to be all. Okay, so they mentioned something about something to the north. Maybe we'll get into that. Anything else? Elf fruit. I need to get all the elf fruit I can to upgrade my potions. Also, I need to kill you. Yeah, I need meat. I don't know if I can get it this early, but. Ah, it's just ram leather. There's a, I know that there's a quest. There was a very annoying quest where you have to like gather some meat and stuff. And um, I was trying to go ahead and 
do that early, but I guess it doesn't actually spawn until you um, get into the quest. Bah. Which, now that that's been mentioned, maybe I should just go ahead and go to the first actual fight thingy. Mother Giselle should be somewhere nearby. I also just saw a big green flash up here. Is that something that I can deal with now? Kalanad's foothold. Okay, got some iron. Reinforced shield, wooden wolf figurine. Not sure what that's for. <clears throat> All right. Can I fight you guys? Yeah, there we go. I really do like that. Stay back, please. Please don't come all the way over here. Great. Oh, shit. Are you gonna hit me? Damn it. All right, I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. Okay, now that that's they're distracted. This. There we go. And we can close this now. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to be a lot more careful. Enhanced War Cry Rain. Um, that sounds like something you could use, Cassandra, because I feel like you probably have War Cry. Uh, also, weapons, reinforced shield. It's a bit better. Okay. Accessories. Yeah, you have that. Got some power. Okay. Also, for the map, it looks like there's a camp up here. So I guess I'll go ahead and keep to that. Guess I can recover my health too. Oh wait, is that enemies? That it's enemies. Please stop shooting at me. and training suggest something deeper probably personal locket dayless toy soldier all right and the camp is up here trailblazer Okay. Yeah, and I did recover my health. Okay, so that's good. Couldn't quite remember how that mechanic worked. Oh god, what happened here? Map to waterfall. Oh yeah, these little treasure maps. I forgot about those. Okay. Liana's ready to report. And we're hearing the sound of all the fighting. Now, I couldn't remember whether these are like scouting stuff out or what. Certain objects in the distance. I am not familiar with such magic. Of course, it has to be a skull that lights up creepy shit. <laughs> 
shards. The hell is that? There we go. So I guess that's everything. I can't remember what those shards are for, but they might be useful. All right, let's see where we're going because I'm just kind of walking at this point. So where we need to go is over there. We've just went in the exact opposite direction. But it looks like this might be a dead end, so. Um, is there a path? No, there is no path. And I don't know if jumping off of this mountain would be a good idea. Uh, I guess we can kind of wiggle our way around. Yep. Okay. I'm pretty sure there is fall damage even if you slide off the side of a mountain, so Look you have to be it. careful. The apostates have gone mad with power. I see just as many Templars. Well, let's jump in there, shall we? Hey guys. You know, Solus, if you want to give me a barrier, that, that'd be great. So, Cassandra, Jesus. We must continue on if we are to secure the alliance. Yeah. Weapon fragment. Again, where we have to go is up there. What is in here? Oh, this is where one of those shards is. Um, now, how I get in there? That's a great question. I was about to say, is this a conclave could achieve peace, Cassandra? I had hope, as did we all. The Templars went to war to force mages back into their circles, which the mages would never agree to. What solution could Divine Justinia have offered when all sides rejected compromise? The war was going nowhere for either side. That they went at all showed they realized this. Or they believed the other side would relent. We shall never know now. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, is this a house without any, um... Whatchamacallits? Where is this shard supposed to be? Guess this? Dwarven Runecraft. Within the diamond quarter of Orzammar lies the Shaperit, a branch of a dwarven society so ancient that the dwarves themselves do not know when or where it began. They are the keepers of history for a people who have never known the sun or seasons, and who track time by the lives and deaths of kings. But they are not mere historians. They are craftsmen for... The living history of the dwarves is not written but forged. The memories, as the dwarves call their records, are runes painstakingly crafted from lyrium, which contain the actual thoughts of the shapers who made them. The making of runes is not restricted solely to the shapers. The most commonly useful kind are crafted by many members of the smith cast from lyrium and other magically reactive metals and can imbue a variety of fascinating new properties to an item when properly applied, just as the runes of the of Tevinter design do. But runes are found everywhere in dwarven artwork and not all serve a practical purpose, at least not one that's known. They are carved onto houses and storefronts, they are embroidered on garments etched in glassware, even painted on chamber pots. The meaning of the symbols themselves are sacred knowledge kept by the Shaperit. They are not, as many surface folk believe, the written language of the modern, modern dwarves, but rather are remnants of a lost language that predates Orzammar, 
the Dwarven Kingdom, and even the tens of thousands of years of history recorded in the memories. The Shaperit recognizes the meanings of a few dozen Dwarven runes. Memory, obviously, is used for their record keeping. Many have not so much been translated many have not so much been translated as inferred. Runes which decorate both armor and load bearing architecture might even might very well mean strength or endurance. New symbols are unearthed now and then in the fallen tigs, brought back by the Legion of the Dead and jealously hoarded by the shapers who struggle to find their uses and origins. Were these symbols an early version of the written Dwarven tongue, a language that fell into disuse, replaced by the modern king's tongue? It is hard to guess, and the memories offer us no wisdom. From In Pursuit of Knowledge, Travels of a Chantry Scholar by Brother Jenny TV. He was in um, Dragon Age. Get out of my way, please. Uh, he was in Dragon Age Origins. Um, I can't remember what the whole thing was. I think he had something to do with the old um, Sacred Ashes thing, if I'm not mistaken. Guys. Wrap this up. All right. Really need you guys to calm down. All right, so let's go up here. And I think we're going to see um, Mother Giselle. I believe that was her name. I wonder if she's expecting a gigantic Gunari. I also don't have, I don't remember having to go this way in the original game, but again, 10 years. The crossroads. And it looks like there's a bunch of enemies around. Wonderful. Oh God, bad. Inquisition forces. They're trying to protect the refugees. Looks like they could use a hand. Working on it. We are not apostates. I do not think they care, Seeker. All right, there. We are not Templars. We mean you no harm. Doesn't look like they're listening. Back up, sir. Thank you, Cassandra. Oh, God, where did you come from? Sandra, if you doing this bad with that armor, I can only imagine what you would be like with, you know, your regular armor. Jesus. Ow. Ow. Please stop shooting me. I, I'm gonna deal with you. You know what? Oh, well, that's not good. No. Oh. Okay. I forgot how much of a dick these shield dudes are. It's done. Oh, God. Nice. 
<laughs> Very good luck. He was gonna fight somebody. Is here who can heal your wounds. Lysteth, don't, don't touch me, mother. Their magic is. Turn to noble purpose. Their magic is surely no more evil than your blade. What? <laughs> Hush, dear boy. Allow them to ease your suffering. Mother Giselle. I am. And you must be the one they are calling the Herald of Andraste. Hmm. You asked for me. I'm told you asked for me. I know of the Chantry's denouncement, and I'm familiar with those behind it. I won't lie to you. Some of them are grandstanding, hoping to increase their chances of becoming the new divine. Some are simply terrified. So many good people, senselessly taken from us. Hmm, it was a tragedy. What happened was horrible. Fear makes us desperate, but hopefully not beyond reason. Go to them. Convince the remaining clerics you are no demon to be feared. They have heard only frightful tales of you. Give them something else to believe. Hmm. Will that work? That won't just make it worse? Because you are a mage. That too. <laughs> Let me put it this way. You needn't convince them all. You just need some of them to doubt. Their power is their unified voice. Take that from them and you receive the time you need. Hmm. Thank you. It's good of you to do this. I honestly don't know if you've been touched by fate. Or sent to help us, but I hope. Hope is what we need now. The people will listen to your rallying call as they will listen to no other. You could build the Inquisition into a force that will deliver us or destroy us. I will go to Haven and provide Sister Leliana the names of those in the Chantry who will be amenable to a gathering. It is not much. But I will do whatever I can. Oh, all right. Thank you. All right. So we leveled up two in the process. Um, again, it's only one point. Let's see. I kind of do want that barrier, that auto um cuts on let's see guardian spirit yeah protective barrier springs into place around you automatically when you're badly injured hmm let me see here exploding bolt Gathering storm, you use your stats energy to fill the area with sympathetic magic. Each basic attack shortens your active cooldown times. Okay, yeah, I'll use that. Because I do spend a lot of time just using <clears throat> regular attacks, so. And then that will lead me to static cage. You trap enemies inside an electric field that paralyzes those that try to leave. Definitely gonna need that. Corporal Vale is coordinating the Inquisition's efforts in the area. We should speak with him. I know. Okay. What is this? Saga of Tirda Brightaxe of our mother. Tirda Brightaxe, dwarf friend chieftain, with her leaf eared love lay. Woke she did to love sweet morning, lover gone in light of day. Dream words whispered, spoken soft still, the silence crushed and crashing. Dead her tribe unless a child could keep her line in warrior fashion. Avalvar, so named the lover, called our journey yours and mine. One day child of Tirda's blood, Morigananan, in strength must shine. Lovers whisper to obey, Hindir, Dwarf Prince, friend in passion, 
babe produced to serve the line the avar tribe her name are taking sure i have no idea what any of that means but all right i mean i didn't notice morgan in there but okay uh what do we got up here first of all how do i get up there under protection of We can tell he's old up until the mages and Templars are done killing each other. All right. Farewell. And you as well. Yep. And that's just telling me about the power situation. Um, this is a camp, but I guess I can't heal myself. Okay. Merchant outskirt camp. What do we got? The Blood Brothers, Rifts in the Foothole, Rifts on the Outskirts. That's for the Potion. And that's for the Horse Master. Okay. So it looks like we need to go Northwest in order to get that. And I guess that is where we shall head. Because I don't want to head near Red Cliff um, for story reasons. Uh, I think I'm going to stay away from that for now. So, northwest we shall go. But I guess I also need to talk to that hunter. Recruit Whittle. Where are their coats? People are cold. What do you need to keep these refugees warm? Blankets, warm clothes, all of it. These poor sods lost everything when the mages and the Templars went crazy. If we were in a village, I could just pinch a blanket off a clothesline and be fine. Out here, I'm sure the apostates have plenty of supplies, just haven't been able to find them. Okay. Farewell. And see you. So I need to find blankets, and where is the hunter guy? Go ahead and get that while I'm out here. So it looks like if I just keep straight, he's up there, I think. Possibly, question mark? Refugee hunter, yeah. What's the problem? These people need food. There are rams out in the hills. Good eating, cooks easy, and no lords around to kill you for poaching. Too dangerous to go hunting out. More likely to find mages than monks. Good luck. Luck won't go fat on you, Rick. Okay, so now we have that as well. I need 10 ram meat. I guess I need to consider that because this is on normal, they increase how much ram meat and stuff you need. Okay. Why do I feel like I'm going the wrong way? Oh, this is gonna suck. Okay. Hey guys. Just gonna stay back here. I was about to say, Cassandra, you already got cooked. Don't stand directly in the fire, please. Who else? Ah, uh, goddamn Templars. Oh, 
Andrew, I hope you have better luck with them because I can't do much here. Cassandra, what are you doing? Why are you looking at me? Uh. Okay, God. Yeah, I really hate the shield dudes. Like, I, I did think it was a unique concept, but like, I, I hated them. I just remember hating them. They weren't too bad in my first playthrough because again, I was a rogue, but still. Sorry, buddy. Didn't mean to kill you. Finnick fur. Plenty of loot. Silk. Got over here. Some more elf fruit. Oh crap! More. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time here because I think they're just gonna keep constantly spawning people. Probably be useful for crafting stuff later on. And again, some more people spawn. So yeah, I just need to get the hell out of here. I guess it's good for farming, but beyond that, is there anything I need to actually do here? There's a rift up there. So I guess I'll go ahead and knock that out. Oh, and everybody else got levels to level up. All right, so you got a point. Um, or resolve, shield wall. Can't be flanked by enemies and you're less likely to be staggered when hit from the front. Okay. That might be useful. Turn the boat. Your expertise with the shield protects you against ranged attacks from the front. Huh. What else do you got? Crippling blows. You know how to take the fight out of your foes. Your critical hits leave enemies weakened. Hamstring. When you attack a target from behind, you leave them slowed. Okay, so I'm definitely not picking anything from this one. Let's see, challenge your powerful shell. I already have that. Trust the steel. You know how to make the most of your equipment, gaining a bonus to armor when you when you have active guard. Charging bull. You slam into your enemies, increasing your guard and knocking them down as you break through their lines. Okay. Oh, war cry. You taunt all nearby enemies with a shout at challenge, gaining extra guard for each enemy affected. Yeah, I'm actually get that because, um, yeah, I need her to actually draw the enemies and stuff. Because this looks like this looks like it only affects one enemy. So this will get everybody that's going to screw her a lot, but still. All right, Varric, um, what do we do with you? Give you the poison fighting dirty. All of your sunder and poison effects will last longer as you make more potent toxins and uglier wounds. Okay. So longer. Infected wounds. Your poison helps your blades and arrows bite deeper. You do more damage with your weapons while poison weapon is active. Let's see. You gain health when you attack enemies with poison weapons active. Interesting. Don't know if I want it though. 
All right, let's do some archery. Breaking shots, leaping shots, first blood. I think I'm end up doing first blood. Yeah, because I want to, I want to get the explosive shot, and I also want to get pin cushion. So let's do that. And Solas, what do you have here? Either dispel, mind blast. You send enemies staggering with an explosion of willpower that drives them back and makes them less likely to target you again. Okay. And dispel, you remove hostile magic and status effects from allies while stripping beneficial effects from enemies. Um, We're not getting attacked too much. So let's go with the dispel because we are dealing with a lot of mages right now. Okay. Should be good on that front now. Ah, wonderful. Oh crap. I've got to move. Sandra, a little help here. I hate those guys. I hate these things. Crap, move. Oh, okay, it died. Alright, guys, get ready. Can you handle that? Ah, damn it. Just won't give me a chance, will you? All right. You got the smarter. But didn't matter in the end. Sundering spirit essence. And there was a shard back over here. Again, I don't know what this is for. That's what the skull helped you find? Right. Not ominous at all. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. I didn't do a whole lot of the side quests in this game. Just because again there were so many and a lot of them seemed like fetch quests, so I just didn't bother. We need to try to make it to the next camp because we're not doing good too good health wise. Cabin key required. Okay. Great. Just spawned out of nowhere. Excuse me. Totem, decorative gems. Let's claim whatever the hell this is. More stories of Tear to Bright Axe. Oh, God. Is that a spider? Ah, it is. Great. Wonderful. My favorite. Shit. How are you still alive? Okay. Um, how far away are we from the nearest camp? The nearest camp is to the west. Hmm. So, can we get there? 
Great. More of you guys. So, who are you? Lover's not... Really? Why did you spawn right there? Dick move game. That's a real dick move. I don't remember if that was a thing when I last played it, but uh, it could have very well been. Gully of the Burnt Men. This looks ominous. Oh, wolves. Oh, what the hell are you? Oh, shit. Oh, no. We need to run. We need to run. Oh, I'm so sorry, Barrett. Excuse me. Um, we need to go. We can't beat that. Oh, boy. Everybody's, everybody's dead. Everybody is dead. Oh, no. You still following me? Well, then, that was a thing. Is everybody going to like teleport to me? Because I mean, oh, okay, yeah. Everybody just teleported to me. Oh my god, I didn't think that was gonna happen. So yeah, um, whenever you see enemies with the little uh, skull on them, you can't do anything to them. You're just not strong enough. Um, and now that I think about it, I might be even more screwed because I don't think... I don't think I can deal with the next area. Because we have to go through one of these uh, rift thingies. And I don't think we're strong enough to even deal with the enemies. I could be wrong. Oh God. I just want the camp. Can, can I please get to the camp? Okay, it's right there. Jesus Christ. Yep, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> wasn't expecting that at all. Please. All right, supplies replenished and everything. So we're good. And we have enough power to travel to Valriul. Um, What else do we have over here? There's a rift. Mastiff horses. Oh, damn, it's over here. Um, where is Dennett? It's right over there. I think this means I can get my horse now. Yes, there are horses in this game that you can use. And I think I get a special one because I have the whatever edition this is. This must be Master Dennett. I see a question mark. Deft hands find tools. And I'm pretty sure Rogue, I mean, uh, Varen does not have that. Uh, when a compass post, uh, press. Okay. There must be something here. Trying to bring order. Watch yourself, Inquisition. It's ugly out there. Sorry, but I need to take something from you. Bottle of Thetis. 
Carno 869 Bless, an Orlesian liquor for the daring or those who wish to seem so, said to enhance sensation, and at the bottom, an erotically carved peach pit. The design is plain, but the bottler assures that the act of carving was scandalous. Okay. Name's Dennis. I served all Eamon for 30 years as horse master. I hear your inquisition is looking for mounts. That's right. It is. Can you help us? Not at the moment. I can't just send a hundred of the finest horses in Ferelden down the road like you send a letter. Every bandit between here and Haven would be on them like flies on crap. You'll have mounts once I know they won't end up as a cold winter's breakfast. Um, I don't remember if Dennett was in Dragon Age Origins. I feel like he may have been the one. No, he wasn't the one that was. Uh, I don't think he was the one that was looking for his daughter. Um, and his daughter had ran off to the castle or whatever. But uh, I feel like he might have been in Origins, but I could be wrong. Uh, you got a problem with me? If you have a problem with me, Pumwinley, I'd like to know about it. I've got no quarrel with the canary. No idea how you ride without your feet dragging on the ground. But that's between you and the mounts. <laughs> my wife Elena manages the farms and Bron's in charge of my guards. They'll tell you what they need. Until then, you deserve something better than whatever knock-kneed plow neck they gave you. The chestnut over there is a purebred Ferelden forder. Take care of him, and he'll take care of you, Inquisition. Okay. Good to see you, Inquisition. Uh, can you help the refugees? The refugees down at the crossroads could use your help. Right now, any food I give those luckless bastards might as well go to the rebel mages or bandits. Talk to my man, Bron. He'll tell you what those folks need to protect themselves. Once that's done, I'll give as I can. I've no problem with charity, long as it's not wasted. Uh, tell me about the area. What can you tell me about the wilderness around here? It's got some old ruins in the forest, from long before any king of Ferelden. The lakes are pretty, and when the weather's odd, you hear tell of spirits. Beyond that, my daughter Sienna set up a track just over there. Fool girl likes to race the horses. Uh, tell me about your wife. You said your wife Elena is in charge of the farms? Yes. A lot of families work our land. They work for us, and we take care of them. Elena knows the farms better than I do. Knows what they need. I imagine not being killed by anything would be a start, though. <laughs> Farewell. Make her be with you. Okay, so we got a couple things to do here. Uh, what you got upstairs here, buddy? Hard in High Town, Chapter One. Another time. The Free Marches banner. Oh yeah, yeah, we can use those later on. Let's see. I think that's pretty much it. Didn't even see you over there. I heard what my man said. If you want our horses, then we need our farmers back safe in their fields. Since the breach appeared, the wolves have gone mad. They come after our men like beasts with the water sickness. You deal with the wolves, and our farmers will be safe again. Okay, tell me about these wolves. How are these wolves acting differently from normal? Normal wolves go after livestock. But come at them with a torch and a blade and they run these beasts though it's it's like dark spawn during the blight or when the dead rose to attack us they're possessed or something like it i've lost too many men to the beast i won't endanger more farewell good day to you okay i'm gonna take some of your elf fruit here Man, it's not like you need it so i'm going to take it And the horses. Now, can I pick my horse? Because I should have horses. Sienna? Fancy trying out one of my courses. Uh, explain these races. What kind of racing are you talking about? I set up a course over there with stakes in the ground. It's too narrow to race directly, so I time it with a sand glass. You try to ride the course before I call time. I'll speak with you later. Yeah, it's a hard pass. Again, maybe something I'll do in uh, spare time. 
Okay, Rev, let's stick to Gallop. B to dismount. To summon your mount, press LB. To open the readout menu and select force. Okay. So I do have mounts. I'm guessing I can't change that right now. I'll have to wait till later. And of course my companions, they magically disappear. So let's see. Trouble with wolves. There's another camp down here. So I guess maybe I'll travel down there because I, I don't think I can really fight anything over here. So yeah, let's head south. Oh, wolves. Great. has driven these animals mad the breach may have driven them mad or perhaps a demon took command of the pack you know I feel like one good fireball should deal with them oh, great some more of those jerks over there um, okay so the wolf thing is up there I'm pretty sure that will get me killed um, let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, maybe I should have went up into this way. Yeah, maybe that wouldn't have been as bad. Because all this is looking like a bad idea right now. Okay, I'm going to try the wolf thing, but... uh. I'm not going to get my hopes up. And that's up here. This is a thick horse. Jesus Christ. Reminds me of those uh, horses in uh, Conan. I don't see a mark over there for something. Yeah, from what I remember, I do not want to deal with this riff right now because I cannot deal with said riff. So uh, we'll deal with that another time. But maybe I can deal with the wolves. If not, I will run. Let's go ahead and get off. I don't want to get surprised. Speaking of which. You know, this kind of makes me really <laughs> miss the uh, formations in Pillars of Eternity where I could have somebody, you know, in front and stay in the background. What's this weird stuttering thing that's going on? Okay, 
This that looks ominous. Could be the lair of our strange wolves. Mm, I'm seeing a lot of enemies. But where? Oh, the demon. right there. Okay. You still around, Jesus. Okay. Demon dead. The farmers should be safe from the wolves. I expect the wolves are also pleased to be freed from the deed from the troll. Good for you guys. Token of the pack master. Great. Now we just don't have, you know, fearless wolves, we just have regular wolves. I guess you take whatever wins you can get. I feel like there was something else here. Some more elf fruit. It looks like a cave thing is over there. So how did this area kind of conveniently turn out like this? I mean, did the demon make it this way? Okay, some loot. A weighted dagger, that is useless to me. Don't know what this crystal gate grace is for. Grenade built, sure. Lover's not left half. Okay. Oh, I guess this must have been where I came in at. Um, so now we can tell Elena about the wolves. I can just fast travel there, correct? Yep. And that automatically heals us even better. This will mean we'll get horses from the from Master Dennett, so this will be one thing that we've wrapped up. You deal with the wolves. Oh crap. Farmers will be safe to death. Uh don't mind the weirdness. I didn't mean it. Oh crap. Okay, I've stopped the wolves. The wolves should be back to normal now. They shouldn't be any further trouble. That's good to hear. I'll send word to the farmers and let my husband know what you've done. It may not seem like much. But you've given this land hope it desperately needed. Oh, crap. Okay. I've put out the call to the farmers. I appreciate you driving those wolves away. Okay, so now this is done. Speak with Braun. Were you always over here? 
master doesn't want me handing those refugees weapons until they've got any hope of defending themselves. If you put up a few watchtowers, we'd all have more warning before the next attack. Uh, what do you want me to do? You said you had a way to help the refugees. I do. There are too many hills in these parts. Good places for raiders and bandits to gather. I've marked good spots on the map. You set up watchtowers there. I'll talk to the master and get your people weapons. Okay. Farewell. So there's three areas we need to set up watchtowers at. This shouldn't be too much of a problem. And are they nearby? Yeah, one is right there. The other two are around here. I think the place I need to go is down there too, so. Or the place that I would like to go is down there. Should be where one of the uh, other companions are. A heartfelt request, loss, prize winning Druffalo Druffy. Ran when demons attacked, last seen down in the gully, rewarded, found, and returned to Farmstead. A note posted on a public board with a simple map showing the general location of the Druffalo and where to return her. I wonder if that's the one. I hope that's not the one that I attacked earlier. If so, you know, maybe. But, uh. It was in the way. Oh, shit. Really? Damn it. There we go. Jumped over that one. Let's deal with this, guys. One down. Sandra, deal with that, please. Wonderful. I really do hate these things because they just love attacking me for some reason. Sensing enemies up there, but I am not going to worry about that for right now. More stories about Tirda. I'm going to assume that each one of those little um, story thingies are going to be things that are relevant to each area. But then again, maybe Tirda is relevant in every area. I don't know. So where is this watchtower supposed to be? I'm guessing up here. We must have done enough to draw the attention of the clerics by now. Shouldn't we meet with them? Look, I'm trying to do stuff, sir. All right, so the next watchtower down there it's basically just a straight shot I wonder if I'm gonna have to do any fighting trying to get these uh, set up I 
cannot wait to change you out because you are slow. I mean, you're pretty thick, so that explains it, but still. Please, enemies, do not mind me. Just trying to do my job and go on about my business. Next one is over there. Hmm. I guess it'll be easier just to fast travel. Cause I don't know what well this looks like it just takes me around. But yeah, I'll just fast travel up here and then come back down there. Or not. You know, we could just not. Where are you at? I just lost you, Jesus. Great. Fantastic. So the shortest way, well, I guess we're just gonna have to go around and then go up. Wonderful. I do think once I get that little mark up there, though, I can just fast travel up there. Also, what is this? It's just another quest. A letter found on a dead dwarf. I don't care how many demons and apostates are in that area. The package was lost somewhere on the river north of those farms. Follow the river and find it, or we'll find you. Okay. Alright, hopefully this won't turn into a big mess. Letter. A letter found on a dead body. Take it back, take it back, take it back. Dreams won't stop until you take it back to the Western Fortress. They will never stop. They will wake up screaming and find notes written by your own sleeping hands. Take it back or I will draw allies to do it for me. Okay. Oh, great. Templars, wonderful. And it's like nothing but mages here. I need to take you. That shield. Really hate it. And I think what makes the shield even worse is that, like, I believe even when that person is frozen, it still works the same way.
You're still alive, Jesus. Okay. Oh, that was a fight and a half. Poor Frost Staff, Spike the Tower Shield. Uh, Cassandra, can you equip that uh, Tower Shield? You cannot. Level six. Great. And none of us can level up. Wonderful. And hell, by the time she can actually use it, I might have her in a different specialization altogether. But I do think shields are quite useful in this game. Some more decorative gems. Ooh, lots of stuff. Oh, there seems to be a lot of decorative gems. I'm not sure what I can use that on. I'm pretty sure I have to use that for uh, the... Um, well, I see there's a requisition for it. And also, I think you can use it on some of the um, armor and stuff that you craft. Got some more elf fruit over here. And a letter. Templar encampment. We must be ready to fight not only the mages, but those who sympathize with them. Have not the mages have not the mages blood magic to trick the minds of the unwary, blah 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 blah. This is something about an encampment. Okay. I'm guessing this is up over here. Oh crap. No, leave them. Hey, buddies. That was too easy. Adventurer's hat. Collect the shard. Again, not sure what this is going to do. Oh, these fuckers. Hey guys. Just a little bit more. Let's push up. Nice. Fort Connor. Fort Connor was constructed by young Arl Eamon after the Eurlesians were driven from Ferelden. It was named in honor of Eamon's father, who died at the Battle of West Hill, and after whom the Arl named his son. Eamon was determined for Redcliffe to stand as uh, to stand a shining example of Ferelden strength. He constructed Fort Connor to watch the King's Highway and protect the hinterlands against all enemies. It proved its fortitude against Darkspawn during the Fifth Blight, suffering damage only when the Darkspawn deployed emissaries. Eamon said proudly at the time that Fort Connor was unbreakable by anything short of magic, and for that, thank the Maker, we have Templars. Excerpt from Living Redcliffe by Sister Dorcas Girin. So, was she some kin to um, Carl Eamon? Uh, what do we got here? Templar encampment. We already read about something with the Templar encampment. Reinforced Defender Armor. Hmm. Let's 
Is any of that useful to you all? Nope, because you can't wear anything. What about you? Yeah, a whole lot of nothing. Uh, adventure hat, sure, you wear that. Um, and you can't really wear anything else either. All right. Proceed. Uh, they're fine. You know what? Let's not get caught up in this. Let them continue to fight, and we will go off doing our own thing. Unless we're attacked. this how do I get up there can I scour my way up this I cannot oh great just spawn some enemies on me why don't you oh okay I'm dying stay down there now I ask again how do I get up there wait isn't this close to the area I almost died before Here and yes, Bill Watchtower's operation. Okay, so that's an operation that we can turn around and use now. For fuck's sake. Sandra just went in there putting in work. Okay. So let's see what other quests we have right now. Um, we have enough power to travel to Val Rayu. Uh, Templars to the west. Located Templar camp along the western road. Hunger pangs. I need some ram meat. I want to at least finish that. Uh, and then find the five apostate caches. So, hmm. But I need to get ram meat for that. Templars to the west. So where would this be? It's over here somewhere. And I wonder if by doing that will we stop um these guys just kind of rando spawning all the time because that would be quite helpful don't mind us really great Great. Didn't mean to do that, but since I made a mistake. Okay, let's get out of here before we trigger anybody else. Yeah, the, the uh, spawning on top of you, not cool. Oh, 
Oh shit, I didn't even see. Oh, and I am dead. That's wonderful. Um I'll just play as Varric. Solus. Oh, crap. Uh, Solus, please heal yourself. Also, who is... Oh, that's just me. Sir. Seriously, I got this one dude. Okay. Good God. I know, I, I know, I know. Indeed. So we gotta be. Help to the breach, the better. We gotta be careful too, cause uh, getting low on potions as well. Um. So the Templar encampment is supposed to be around here somewhere. Damn it! I didn't want to use this now, but. Worst case scenario, I will just run. Oh, shit. The Templars have secured a position ahead. Do I want to do this right now? There's nothing really. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any health potions or anything. This could be tough. I guess I'll just try to draw each one out and have them fight up in here. So I don't think I want to go in that. Great. Solus, why are you running in there? Okay. So far, so good. if we could have had potions there's somebody over here there careful careful are oh, you guys are just kind of stuck I don't see one of those shield douchebags all right Get in there too. So I think that means we've pretty much killed them all, except for this one person that's hiding in the bushes over there like I can't see you. Soldier Helm. Bro, your whole camp is dead, and you're just sitting up here chilling the entire time. Like, 
like you didn't hear the thunder going off or anything. quite a bit the Swedish fingers I was about to say Solus don't you dare tell me about us going to devour you again Cassandra, can you wield the Swedish fingers? I feel like you should be able to. Yep. Okay. It's an <laughs> interesting looking sword, but okay. I want to say that there's lore little bits or whatever for every single armor and weapon and stuff, but I could be wrong. Now we can just deal with the mages. That'll make things a lot easier. Um, I remember that Druffalo quest and I really don't want to deal with it. Cause I think you essentially have to like lead the Druffalo um, from where, whatever area it is back to the um, farm or whatever. It's just kind of a pain. Uh, go to the location mentioned in the letter. Oh, those are prostate caches, so caches are real far away. Return policy. Okay. Yeah, I get the feeling that the companion is there, but I they could also be over here. Hmm. So maybe I'll end up going over here because uh, it seems like a lot of stuff that I need to do, or that I can do, is over in this area. Yeah, hunger pangs is right there. So yeah, I'll go ahead and head over here. And let's see, one, two, wait, there's one. Hmm. Maybe there's five over there and five at the other spot. Okay. So let's go over here and then we will head south east, right? All right, south, east, that would be that way. Do I have potions now? Yes, okay, cool. What the fuck? Let's see. Not sure what you are. I think I'll get to the camp first and then try to go from there. And that's just directly south. Oh, this might be a bad idea. These don't hurt too much. Another treasure. I think the camp is up on this hill somewhere. Wait. The 
apostates have fled to the hills. Damn it, ran away. Fine work out there. All right, got some ram meat. It's only one, Jesus. This is going to take a while. Yeah, because I feel like in the uh, if you play it on easy or whatever, then it's only uh, five ram meat that you need to get. Which I'm guessing that means it goes up by five on each one. Wait, 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 wait. Juicy ram meat. Yeah, just keep spawning over here. I'll take it. Hey, buddy. Are you guys going to even try to catch any ram meat? It's just all me. Okay. Now, I wonder if they'll stop spawning now that I've killed uh, five. Or can I keep getting ram meat over here? Let's see. Where did it die? It is that it? Seven now, so I guess not. More rams. Where are you guys at? Did I not already get you? No, oh, guess not. I just need two more. Hey, buddy. Alright, so one more and we will be done with this quest. Actually, it didn't take as long as I thought it would take. Not over there. Just some hell fruit. Really? Is this going to be the one time when you guys just don't drop in on me? ram meat tastes like don't think that's one of those things I've had and I'm country as shit and of course you know my, my wife loves reminding me of that but I don't think I've had a ram meat before you know, I've had some thumper and you know had deer and stuff like that so but I don't think I've had ram meat
Ah, I see you hiding over there. There we go. Okay, you, you poisoned the meat, Varric. I don't know if that was a good idea. Okay, so I can give the ram meat to the hunter. Cook up some food. Still gotta find blankets and stuff, but once we find that. Confess, Solas, I am surprised you decided to remain. Why? The breach remains a threat to us all. Just the same. I wondered if you might leave now that we have a plan to seal it. Ah, because I am an apostate. I might flee before the Inquisition throws me in chains. I take my commitment seriously, Seeker. Come what may, I shall see this through. As you wish. Though I cannot guarantee what will happen in the days to come. Oh. Have you seen another Inquisition scout? Elven woman, answers to Rick. You said your friend hasn't reported back? She was supposed to be checking on some apostates. I'm on duty here or I'd go look for her. I'll talk to you later. Okay. I mean, if I run into her, yeah, sure. Cross that bridge when we get there. And here's the camp. camp. Would it? Because, I mean, this place seems like a hellhole right now. Nothing to report, sir. Sir. Okay, so we got another place. Can go up there and establish a camp, or I can continue over here and find the apostate caches. But if I do that, I'm gonna have to do some fighting. Okay, I think I'm gonna go back to the main village and drop off this food or the crossroads and drop off this food, and then after that, we'll hit the Val Ryu, Ryo, and then uh, we'll close out the episode with that. Hopefully the Inquisition can find some way to help these people. I was hoping I could get another companion um, for that, but it does not seem to be the case. Because I do know that there's one here. Because we do get a companion for going to Valryu, but uh... They're not as useful, and honestly, I don't really use them at all. Alright. Here, maybe this will help. It more than help. With this, I can fill these hungry bellies. Give these folks some hope. I didn't think much of the Inquisition. But no one else is helping like you lot. Maybe I was wrong. Alright, got some power. And I have reached level five. What am I going to do with this level five? Guess I could do static cage. Um, even though honestly, yeah, let me go ahead and get this barrier and then I'll get the next barrier with the next level, um, the guardian spirit with the next level. So that way I won't have to worry about um, getting attacked so much because yeah I died pretty quick and that's pretty much much what you would uh, expect from a mage okay so I think we can return now but how do we do that disengage clear commands I really wish he would stop doing that. Mm, where's the thingy? Let's do buy and sell. Fast travel. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, Haven, yeah.
Okay, so that was a pretty good run. I actually thought it was going to take more time to do a lot of this stuff because I do remember just thinking about some of this stuff and just remembering how much of a slog it was to do a lot of this stuff. And again, we're still in the very early stages of the beginning of the game. Like this is, we're still really not even into the game proper. So. Um, is there anything I can wrap up while I'm here? Modify some armor. Let's see. Find Tegan's notes or Tegan's notes. Fuel the requisition. Yeah, and then we got the follow-ups to do. So maybe I can fuel the requisition? Not sure. I do not know what it requires. Oh, wonderful. Your kind killed the most holy. Lies. Your kind let her die. Shut your mouth, mate! Enough! Knight Captain! That is not my title. We are not Templars any longer. We are all part of the Inquisition. And what does that mean, exactly? Back already, Chancellor. Haven't you done enough? I'm curious, Commander, as to how your Inquisition and its heralds will restore order as you promised. Of course you are. Back to your duties, all of you. And I'm sure he's here just to start trouble. Mages and Templars were already at war. Now they're blaming each other for the Divine's death. Which is why we require a proper authority to guide them back to order. Who? You? Random clerics who weren't important enough to be at the Conclave. <laughs> the Rebel Inquisition and its so-called Herald of Andraste? I think not. Why can't we work together? Why can't we all get along? So far, you're the only one who's insisted we can't work together. We might. If your Inquisition would recognize the Chantra's authority. There is no authority until another divine is chosen. In due time, Andraste will be our guide, not some dazed wanderer on a mountainside. <laughs> Colin, why is he here? Remind me why you're allowing the Chancellor to stay? Clearly, your Templar knows where to draw the line. He's toothless. There's no point turning him into a martyr simply because he runs at the mouth. <laughs> the Chancellor's a good indicator of what to expect in Val Royo, however. Wonderful. Is the Mage Templar War large? How widespread is the violence between Mages and Templars? Impossible to say. Your organization flouting the Chantry's authority will not help matters. With the Conclave destroyed, I imagine the war between Mages and Templars is renewed with interest. Uh, Chancellor Roderick. And, and unfortunately, I do like the guy. But who killed the Divine? The Mages and Templars are fighting, even though we don't know what really happened at the Temple of Sacred Ashes? Exactly why all this should be left to a new Divine. If you are innocent, the Chantry will establish it as so. Or we'll be happy to use someone as a scapegoat. You think nobody cares about the truth? We all grieve. Justinius Noss. But you won't grieve if the Herald of Andraste is conveniently swept under a carpet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will turn with the good news. I'll make sure they see reason in Val Royo. I pray you're right. Okay. Uh, the requisition. That's what I originally came up here for. Uh, you. Can I help you with something? Uh, how do I feel special orders? If I have material for a special order, do I bring it to you? Just take it over there. One of my boys will take the materials or will jot down what you found. Oh. Farewell. Make her go with you. Tapestries. Five velveteen. One logging stand. Okay. Hmm. I know that that stuff is in a particular spot 
I'll just have to figure out where that particular spot is. If he cannot, then he may simply tell me no. Yes, your Lord Mother. And if he does wish to tell me no, I would appreciate him doing so in person. Greetings, Herald of Andraste. How fares your quest to seal the grief? I really wish this person in the background would shut up, but um, I'm trying. I'm doing everything within my power. Closing the breach is a heavy burden. I hope you do not carry it alone. We remember Andraste, but Andraste did not carry the Count of Light alone. She had generals, advisors, even her husband for a time. Do everything within your power, but remember those who would help you. Mm. That comparison scares me. You keep talking as though I'm the equal of Andraste. Do you know how unnerving? I can only imagine. But we are all given to our purpose under the Maker. A sword does not ask to be forged. And frankly, if such a comparison gives you pause, I do not see that as a bad thing. In any case, I pray this Inquisition proves less brutal than its predecessor. Mm. Is there anything I can help with? Anything I can do to help you or your people? My healer would benefit from more supplies. We have run short of even common goods with so many wounded. If you could deliver this list and the items on it to Quartermaster Thren, she could get us what we need. It may not seem like much, but it would enable my healers to save many lives. Again, a lot of fetch questions in this game. Uh, what is the history of the Inquisition? Can you tell me about the original Inquisition? The original Inquisition was formed after the First Blight, well before the Chantry as we know it. The Inquisitors were hunters, zealots, who tracked and killed cultists and dangerous mages. As Andraste rose to power, the Inquisition came into her service. Instead of hunting those who would do harm, the Inquisitors spread the Chant of Light by force. Oh. <laughs> we're named after that? No wonder nervous around us who chose that name divine justinia herself i understand that this was not a popular decision in any case once the chant of light had spread far and wide there was less need for zealots the inquisitors became the seekers of truth and eventually the templar mm. why bring us back this is a dark chapter of history for the divine to revisit do you know what impresses me most about the original Inquisition? They fought horrific battles, killed and died for their cause, and when it was time, they put their swords away. Perhaps the name was Divine Justinia's message. That when the Inquisition is needed, it will strike without mercy. But when its work is done, it will put its sword away. Mm. Okay. Who will be the next Divine? Do you know who the Grand Cleric will choose as the next Divine? It is a difficult decision. All the obvious candidates perished with Divine Justinia at the Conclave. The Grand Clerics are terrified of the Inquisition. They will not decide soon, and I fear they will not decide wisely. Whoever is chosen needs the Inquisition's support. No one else seems likely to seal the breach. Mm. Uh, how are the people? How are the people doing after what happened at the Conclave? They are scared, of course. Many have lost homes or loved ones. I doubt many will sleep well until you have sealed the breach. I have offered what help I can. The rest is for the Inquisition. What more do you wish to know? Mm. I think that's enough for now. Not that I don't care, but I think that's enough of that. All right, we have reports. 
address the nobleman concerns. Sister Liliana, how I rejoice to see the colors of the Inquisition run the rabble out from my ancestral fields and straight into the woods of my neighbor, Ban Traff, no less, as if they were guided by the hand of the maker himself. I could not be better pleased, as promised a reward for your excellent help in my time of lamentation. And Draste keep you in her heart, Lord Kildarn. I got a nice amount of gold from that. Um, I think you do have to be kind of careful with some of these quests, though, because I believe some of them do lead into other things. So, yeah. Uh, Ambassador Montillier, the Inquisition emissaries were a welcome addition to our vigil. As a token of my thanks, I'm sending Ferelden arms for your troops. May the Maker grant you never need them. Okay, so I got a sword for that. And I think that was it, actually. So I can scout the Storm Coast, or I can go to Orlais, which is exactly what I am going to do. The Bog Unicorn. We have received an offer of assistance. Um, an offer of assistance. I'm unnerved, but not opposed. It is not the first strange promise we've received and likely will not be the last. An elegantly written note follows. The Inquisition has need and we would provide. We have in our possession a mount of noble spirit. Oh, yeah, I remember this. It's just a little kind of uh, gag mount that you can turn around and get. So, sure. The creature has arrived. It is just as unnerving as expected. So, yeah, we get the bog unicorn. Um, hmm. Sure. You'll need passage across the lake and see the Kirkwall that is easily arranged. All right, a ship has been secured by the wary of what you find. I mean, be wary of what you may find in the Black Emporium Inquisitor. I've heard many frightful tales. Okay. And we're not going to go now, but just wanted to go ahead and get that done. Build watchtowers. Sure. All right. And rescue soldiers missing in Ferelden. Connections. If I contact the local band, she can send out search parties for the missing soldiers right away. Power calls eight. Good God. Yeah, we're not going to do that right now. And Orlay. We can address the Chantry, contact the Volocost mercenaries, Flames of the Inquisition Charger. Oh, yeah, this is another mount that we can get. And investigate the shards. Sure. Uh, well, thanks to our Lady Ambassador, I was able to study the scroll. The reference is vague, but it implies a connection to a temple, possibly Elven. I followed the lead and believe one such temple stands in an oasis in the Western Approach. As to what may lie within, I cannot say. Reports of the place are cut off or have pages missing. I've yet to find a reliable first-hand account. Perhaps our soldiers can provide a better one. Enchanter Renaud. Uh, no. Alright, and let us go to Valrio. Recommended levels 4 to 7. I'm not sure what level I am, but I am pretty much going to go and then immediately leave, so. Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. You can't be serious. Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they are united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask him. Mm, <laughs> this is a terrible plan. Um, this may not actually help. I'm more concerned this won't actually solve any problems. I agree. It just lends credence to the idea that we should care what the Chantry says. I will go with him. 
Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? Right now, we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. Really hate those pajamas. All right, address, uh, address the Chantry and Valryu. The remaining Chantry clerics have declared the Inquisition heretical. Attempts to gather allies against the breach have been rebuffed. And at this moment, we could not step foot into the capital without being attacked by a mob or arrested. We must convince the Chantry to permit us entry into the city so we can show them the Herald of Andraste is not the monster they believe. Yeah, I'm just a giant Kunari, which they pretty much think is the same thing. Speak only the word. And of course, I show up looking like a barbarian. Yeah. Just a guest seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, Varric. My Lord Herald. You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market. I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. Wonderful. They wish to protect the people from us? Return to Haven. Someone will need to inform them if we are delayed. As you say, my lady. So you just... Okay, so I guess I didn't have anything to talk to them about. Oh, God. Now that I think about it, do I have to do any fighting? I'm not sure if I have to do any fighting. Good people of Val Royal, hear me. Together, we mourn our divine. A naive and beautiful heart, silenced by treachery. You wonder what will become of her murderer. Well, wonder no more. Behold, the so-called Herald of Andraste, claiming to rise where our beloved fell. We say this is a false prophet, a wicked Kunari sent to subvert the maker's word. Ah, racism. I do so love it. Hmm. Let's see. Let us talk peacefully. We came here in peace, simply to talk. And this is what you do? I implore you, let us sit down together to deal with the real threat. It's true. The Inquisition seeks only to end this madness before it is too late. It is already too late. The Templars have returned to the Chantry. They will face this Inquisition and the people will be saved once more. <laughs> Stay. 
Kill yourself. She is beneath us. I'm sorry, but that's <laughs> every time I remember that, it's just like, damn, you just donkey punch her in the back of the neck, like really? All right, uh. Save me the trouble. How dare you? Let's see. Am I supposed to be impressed? Was that display supposed to impress me? On the contrary, it wasn't for you at all. Lord Seeker Lucius, it's imperative that we speak with. You will not address me. Lord Seeker? Creating a heretical movement, raising up a puppet as Andraste's prophet, you should be ashamed. You should all be ashamed. The Templars failed no one when they left the Chantry to purge the mages. You are the ones who have failed. You who'd leash our righteous swords with doubt and fear. If you came to appeal to the Chantry, you are too late. The only destiny here that demands respect is mine. <sighs> then why are you here? If you're not here to help the Chantry, then you just came to make speeches. I came to see what frightens old women so, and to laugh. But Lord Seeker... What if he really was sent by the Maker? What if... You are called to a higher purpose. Do not question. I will make the Templar Order a power that stands alone against the Void. We deserve recognition. Independence. You have shown me nothing. And the Inquisition, less than nothing. <laughs> Templars, Val Royo is unworthy of our protection. We march. Did that guy have lyrium around his neck? Charming fellow, isn't he? Has Lord Seeker Lucius gone mad? How well do you know him? Do you know him very well? He took over the Seekers of Truth two years ago, after Lord Seeker Lambert's death. He was always a decent man, never given to ambition and grandstanding. This is very bizarre. Hmm. We'll find another way. Fortunately, the Templars aren't our only hope. I wouldn't write them off so quickly. There must be those in the Order who see what he's become. Either way, we should first return to Haven and inform the others. All right. The Chantry remains operation available. Ah, uh, fun times. Favors for favors for friends. A message is attached, written in a large flowing hand and bordered with doodles. People say you're special. I want to help. And I can bring everyone. There's a baddie in Valryu. I hear he wants to hurt you. Have a search for the red things in the market, the docks, and round the cafe. And maybe you'll meet him first. Bring swords. Friends of Red Jenny. Uh, a poor drawing of the locations in the market is attached. Okay. However, we will go ahead and stop this for right now. And then in the next episode, we'll pick this up and figure out who is this Red Jenny thing coming from or whatever. Spoiler, it's a companion. So <laughs> probably, probably my least favorite companion in the game, but a companion nonetheless. She ranks slightly above Meryl. So, yeah. Anywho, if you like the video, like the video. If you like to see more content like this, subscribe. I have a lot of things on the channel, and I will have many other things in the future. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave it in the comment section, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.